You will hear a woman talking on the phone to a hotel receptionist. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good morning, Atlas Hotel. Can I help you? Oh yes. A friend has told me about your hotel, and I'd like to book some rooms, please. Okay. When would you like to stay here? Well, we've booked flights on the twenty-third of August. Okay. I'll just find that date. That seems to be fine. We have a few rooms available then. Oh, that's good. I was a bit worried. We've left things rather late. Well, you're lucky. We had two cancellations last week. Oh. Now, how long do you want to stay for? Well, last year we only stayed a week, and it wasn't long enough. So this time we thought two weeks, if it's possible.、Hmm. That looks fine. Yes, you do need plenty of time here to really relax. It'll be getting towards the end of the tourist season as well, so it won't be quite so hot then. Oh, good. Um, we've got two children. And I was wondering if you have any rooms that are next to each other. Hmm. Let's see. I'm afraid that isn't possible. But we do have what we call a family room, which is a lot bigger than a double room and can take two adults and two children. Oh, that sounds perfect. Okay, I'll book you in for that. So, can I have your name and address, please? Yes, it's Mr. and Mrs. Shriver. Can you spell that for me? Yes, it's S H R I V E R. Thank you. And you said two children, didn't you? Yes, they're two boys of ten and twelve. Fine. And can I have your home address? Yes, we live at flat twenty-nine, Tower Heights. Okay, is that England? No, it's Scotland. Actually, we are from Dunbar.、Ah. The postcode's E H forty one, two G K. Okay, great. That's a country I'd really like to visit. You'd have to bring a lot of warm clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And can I have a contact telephone number? Sure. Our home number is o one three one double nine four six five seven two three. Seven two three. Thank you. I hope you don't mind, but we always ask our guests what the purpose of their trip is. I'm guessing yours is a holiday. Yes, we're really looking forward to it. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. As you've been here before, I wonder if you'd mind answering a few short questions for our tourist board. No, not at all. They collect information from tourists so that they can try to improve the tourism industry here. That's a good idea. Okay. Um. So, what type of holiday activity do you like best? 
Well, I like a lot of things. I like shopping and sightseeing. But I think as a family, we all enjoy swimming the most. OK. And do you go to the beaches to do that? Well, sometimes we do. We also like to sit around the pool at the hotel. When you go to the beaches, what do you think of them? Well, they're a bit crowded. I know. But then you expect that in the holidays. The main thing is that they're very clean. That's why we come back. I'm glad to hear that. And you said you like shopping? Yes, it's fun. How are the shop staff? Are they... Well, I don't want to criticise, but sometimes... Well, they're a bit too helpful. Trying to sell you souvenirs? Yes. I prefer to choose things myself. Uh-huh. What about eating and the service in the restaurants? Oh, the food is delicious, always. And the waiters. Well, they're polite and so fast. Nothing takes very long. That's good news. Sometimes people complain, but... Well, I haven't been to every restaurant. There are rude waiters everywhere, I suppose. Well, we like to avoid it if we can. Do you have suggestions for things which might improve your holiday experience here? Um, not really. Let me think. Oh, yes. I did notice the last time I was there that there are local buses, but you don't seem to have any bikes. No, we don't. Most people have cars. Mm. It's just nice to hire one and get some exercise. Go at a slower pace so that you can really see the landscape. OK, I'll note that down. Well, thank you very much. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Two. You are going to hear a student arranging to transfer between English classes. She is leaving a message on the language department's answering machine. The student's name is May Lee. First look at questions 11 to 17. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions 11 to 17. Hello, this is May Lee speaking. This message is for Mrs Brooks in Student Affairs. Mrs Brooks, I telephoned you last week and you told me to call back and put the details of my request to transfer on the answering machine. I hope you can hear me easily. I have the form here and I'll give you the information working from the top to the bottom. As you know, my family name is Lee, spelled L-E-E, -E, and my first name is May. My student number is 002312. That's 002312. I'm in Mr Anderson's class. You know, he's the one who helps out with the football team. The next part of the form asks for my address. I'll give it slowly. I live at flat 5, 10 University Avenue. You probably know the building. It's just near the engineering school. The telephone number is 818 and I share it with a lot of other people, so it's often engaged. I'll give it to you again. 818-6074 I think that's all I have to put on this part of the form. 
I know you were curious about my reason for requesting a transfer, so I'll explain that next. Now look at questions 18 to 22. As May Lee continues her message, answer questions 18 to 22. Now I'll tell you why I want to transfer between classes. Mrs Brooks, I really like my teacher and my classmates, but I find it very hard not to speak in my own language. I just begin to think in English when the class ends, and I'm surrounded by other people from my country, so it's natural that we all speak in our mother tongue. I have been looking around for a class where there are very few other people from my country, so I'll be forced to use English. The best class I can find is the evening class, which begins at 6pm. Most of the students in that class come from countries which speak Spanish, and I can't speak a word, so I must use English. I have an Italian friend in the class, and she tells me there are two Hong Kong Chinese, six Spanish speakers, and one Japanese student. She says most people speak English at the break, although sometimes the Spanish slip into their own language. I check the class list, and two students have dropped out of the evening class, so there should be room for me. Could you please see if I can join the class? I'm not sure what the class number is, but the evening class I want is in room 305 of the Trotter Building. The class I'm in now is next door to the Trotter Building in Prince Tower, so it's very easy for me to find my way to the new class. I'm not going home until late today, so could you please leave a message for me at my friend Margaret's house? Her number is 8127543, and she has an answering machine. I do hope you can transfer me, Mrs Brooks. If there is any more information you need, please call me. Thank you very much. That is the end of part two. You will now have some time to check your answers. Now turns to part three. You will hear two geography students talking. An older student called Howard is giving advice to a younger student called Joanne on writing her dissertation. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen and answer questions 21 to 24. Hi, Howard. I haven't seen you for a while. Oh, hi, Joanne. Yeah, they're keeping us really busy on the postgraduate programme. Mm -hmm. But how are you? You'll be starting your dissertation soon, won't you? Yeah, tutorials start next week. I've got Dr Peterson. You'll remember it all from last year, of course. Oh, it's not something you forget easily. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, although I didn't expect to enjoy writing my dissertation, and in fact I didn't really find it much fun, mm. I wouldn't have missed the experience. I found it really improved my understanding of the whole degree programme, you know, from the first year on. Right. So what are you doing yours on? Glaciated landscapes. Although I haven't decided exactly what aspect yet. Mm, I did mine on climate systems, so I can't help you much, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll be fine once you start your tutorials. Dr Peterson will help you focus. 
I know, and he'll set me deadlines for the different stages, which is what I need. My concern is that I've got tons of material on the topic, and I won't be able to stick to the word limit, you know. Mm, I remember I had different concerns when I was doing my dissertation. Last year? Yeah, before my first tutorial, I did a lot of fairly general reading because I hadn't fixed on my topic at that stage. Mm. I actually enjoyed that quite a lot and really improved my reading speed, you know, so I was getting through a lot of material. I was frightened I wouldn't remember it all, though, so I got into the habit of making very detailed notes. So did you find your tutor helpful in getting you started? Yeah, we certainly had some interesting discussions, but it's funny, I saw a brilliant programme about climate change and it was that that really fired me up. Mm. It was talking about some recent research which seemed to contradict some of the articles I'd been reading. Mm. Now you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. So you say your tutorials start next week? Yeah. Well, the first month's crucial. You've got to meet your tutor and decide on your focus, but don't become too dependent on him. You know, don't see him every week, only when you want to check something. Right. Once you've got the focus, you've got to get reading. Mm. It's helpful to look through the bibliographies for all the course modules relating to your topic and get hold of any books you think you'll need. I haven't got much money. I mean, get the books from the library. Far better. And I suppose I should prepare a detailed outline of the chapters? Yeah, absolutely. But don't feel you have to follow it slavishly. It's meant to be flexible. OK. Now, I'm someone who likes to get writing quickly. I can't just sit and read for a month. <laughs> Not like me, then. <laughs> <laughs> but if that's what suits you, you know, your natural approach, then you really ought to start immediately and write the first chapter. Right. Now, Joanne, about the library, mm. it's worthwhile getting on good terms with the staff. They aren't always helpful with undergraduates. I suppose they focus on postgrads more. Mm, maybe. But show them you're serious about wanting to do good work. And what if I can't find what I need? Well, there's interlibrary loans. Borrowing books from other libraries, but I've heard it isn't all that reliable. Mm, you're right, but you probably won't need it anyway. Be positive. <laughs> the library is likely to have most things you need. And during the dissertation writing period, you can take out 15 instead of the usual 10 books. Should I look at previous year's dissertations? You can do. But I won't know which are the good ones. The library only keeps the best, and the staff can advise you. Are they willing to do that? Oh, yeah. And I'm worried about getting journal articles from the electronic library. Well, have you tried to find any yet? No. Well, you should. It's really straightforward. That's obviously something I'll have to look into. Dr Peterson will help. Yeah, I know I can go to him if I have any worries. Except he will be away in the second month. Ugh. It's the holidays. You should ask him what to do while he's away. Gosh, yeah. But I suppose I can get a lot of support from course mates. I know a couple of people who are thinking of doing the same topic as me. Take care. Collaboration can become dependency. I think you'd better see how that works out, what the people are like. You're probably right. About other reading, I suppose Dr Peterson will recommend plenty of good articles to get me started. One thing I'd find out is what his attitude is to internet sources. Surely not in this day and age. I'd better get that sorted out right at the beginning. I would if I were you. And I've also got some questions about the research sections. How much time I should spend explaining the process? Well, I think that's up to you. You can see how it develops as you're writing. OK. It's the same with things like time management. That's something a tutor can't really help you with. I agree. So, is there anything else you need me to go over? That is the end of part three.
You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Four. You will hear a student representative explaining the views of the student body about how a large donation to the school should be spent. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Thank you, Mr Chairman, for asking the student body about the recent large donation to our school and what it should be spent on. Also, thank you to the rest of the Board of Trustees for letting us have some say over how to improve our university. We know that sometimes students and administration have different priorities regarding the development of the school, but we hope you sincerely consider some of the ideas that are proposed. When the estate of Paul A. Madrib announced that he had left over $50 million to the school, the whole community was quite ecstatic and very grateful for such a generous gift. Since the initial euphoria has passed, though, we have all realised that some tough decisions have to be made. The donation can help fund new projects for the school or improve existing facilities and programmes. But there is not enough money to pay for every single idea. That is why the University Senate through an online survey, asked the student body what ideas they thought were best. The first part of this survey consisted of an open question. Students could list any number of different ideas. The results were then compiled in order to do a second online survey. Ideas that were totally impossible, or those that were jokes, were taken out. All the ideas that consistently came up again and again were put to a vote. We found that the four things that came up the most were all pretty different. I will mention them briefly before going over the pros and cons of each of them. In the first part of the survey, we saw over and over again that students wanted to improve the residential dormitories, completely redo the campus dining system, remodel the athletics building, and finally increase funding for research projects and grants, especially for those in science. Obviously, there is not enough money from the donation to pay for all those ideas, so we have to prioritise. The ideas that got the most votes were improving the residential dormitories and completely redoing the campus dining system. They both got 30% and 28% respectively of students saying that was what most of the money should be spent on. Many of the dorm facilities are quite old and definitely need some repair, particularly the shared bathrooms. Also, students have been complaining for a while that there is not an adequate number of dining facilities on campus and that the quality of the food at existing places is low. Spending most of the donation in these areas would definitely improve the quality of life on campus. However, a significant minority of the student population, about 40%, does not live on campus. They commute from their homes elsewhere and therefore would not benefit from those improvements. 25% of students thought improving the athletics building was the best use of the money and 17% voted for giving money to research projects for science. There are many people who are attracted to our university because of our athletics programs, so improving the building would improve the reputation of the university. Only a small percentage of students actually ever use the athletics building, however. Though it received the fewest votes, giving money to university research projects has great potential. Any new patents that come about because of that research can possibly earn the school lots of money. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.